Hey y'all, it's Christy from Tea Dottles. Um, it's time on this video, I'm gonna show you how to lay your fabric out and lay your pattern on your fabric so you can cut it out before you get ready to sew it all together, which is the best part in my opinion. So first I'd like to say welcome new subscribers. Welcome back subscribers. I'm happy to have you here with me in my maker shenanigans. I do like to do the sewing things, the yarny things, and the DIY things. So you'll see a little bit of all that here on this channel. So if you like to make things, you might like it here. All right, so I have this lovely, lovely floral fabric. Now I'm hoping to get this shirt sewn together because I am going to a luau party and I would like to wear it <laughs> to the luau party. Um, again, Once again, this is the Sophia Top from DG Sewing Patterns uh, that I'm working on, but these tips that I'm giving you will work for any pattern that you have. Um, well, it will work for basic patterns. Let's put it that way. So this lovely floral fabric is, I got it from Fabric Mart. Um, I'm going to put a link down below. You can go check them out. They have the best prices on apparel fabrics. Um, they have different sales every day, every week. Um, uh, but you know, it only lasts so long. So if you see something you like, you better go ahead and get it. Um, they also have flat rate shipping of $9.95 for any order. And sometimes they have free shipping and sometimes they have, uh, what you call it, half price shipping days. And sometimes, and you can earn points to get credits and get, uh, I got $10 off my last order, which was free shipping basically. <laughs> so, um, so this was, because this one was only $5.20 a yard. This is a rayon lycra jersey knit so it's very soft very lightweight perfect for summertime um and now the top portion of my shirt is going to be in this little gray um i have a little leftover piece and i'm going to show you how to work with that one because for this piece i'm going to just lay this down and i'm going to show you how to cut it out with your rotary cutter okay so a couple of things to make sure of before you start pinning or cutting i, I like to lay out my paper pattern on my fabric to see how everything fits before I start pinning or cutting or whatever I'm going to do. I'm not going to pin this one. I'm going to lay stuff on top of it and cut it with my ro rotary cutter. Um, I will be pinning the other one because the piece I'm working with is so small and it's curled up on the edges. So, But for this one, I've laid it out on my fold. Um, and, and so knits, you kind of have to finagle it a little bit to get that somewhat straight over there. Um, and I have already tested to be sure... I can lay this piece and my other piece, because my other piece is a little bigger because I cut the 20 for the back and the 16 for the front. So, and I can get both pieces end to end. Just, I got just enough room to do that. So this is going to work out perfectly. Um, and, but see, knit fabrics are usually, I have a lot of fabric over here, you guys, or y'all. I don't know why I said you guys, but anyway, um, but I save these because I like to use them for... You can use it for all kinds of things. Um, I'm going to be learning to make underwear. So you can use it for underwear. You can use it for accent pieces on your other projects. Um, I don't I don't throw that away. Because uh, most knit fabrics are anywhere from, uh, I'd say, they're, they're usually 60 inches at least wide. So they're wider than your typical quilting fabric. Quilting fabric, cotton fabric is 43 to 45 inches wide. Um, so... What you can do if you find that you can't lay your pieces in the end like this, because I always put my biggest pieces on first. That way I have enough surface area and something else I need to make sure of, which I'm just realizing I don't want to turn this pattern piece this way. I'm going to flip it over backwards, which is perfectly fine since this folds in half. It would work either way. And I'm doing that because this is the top of my piece. And you see this big flowers? It goes, it faces up. So I don't want it to be facing down on my shirt. So I have to make sure all my pieces face up. Now this particular pattern does have some flowers that look like they may be face down, but where my pa pattern piece is landing, this flower is facing up. So I want to make sure that my pattern piece is facing up. So my flowers are all going the same direction. Okay. Um, so something you can do, I'm going to show you right quick. If you're finding that you can't lay it end to end, you need 
to get more room. You've got all this extra fabric over here, so of course you can get more room out of it, right? So what I do is I open up my fabric. There's always a nice crease down the center because of it being folded from being on the bolt. Um, and I take the salvage edge and I pull it towards the center. So now I have another fold, and if your pattern piece fits, you can do this way. And then you can fold the other side in, and then you can have, uh, you can have, uh, you can get more, more out of your fabric. And sometimes you can do it this way, just uh, so you can have a bigger piece on the end left if, if you wanted that. Um, I'm not really concerned about that. I still might lay it out this way. Hmm. This one does have a very wide selvage on one end and a, just a narrow one on this end. So I don't mind my fabric being slightly in. Um, I already know, because I tested this earlier, that laying it out this way for me, it's not gonna really save me much fabric because I have to move the pattern pieces apart like this to keep them from crossing over in the middle uh, because of the taper on the side of this piece here. So I know that that's not gonna work for me. I know that the best way for me is to go down that center seam, but that is an alternate way to fold your fabric to get better pattern placement. You can also fold it from end to end and put your crease down the middle of the fabric. Sometimes that gives you more room too. So I play around with that if you're thinking that your fabric won't fit your pattern that you're trying to make because sometimes it w actually will and you just need to fold it a different way. Um, so those are my tips for folding the fabric. Uh, give me just a second to get this reset and I'll come back and show you how I'll cut it out. Okay. I've got everything reset because I needed to reset it to be sure that everything is smooth and laying as flat as possible with knits. Um, it's really important to put this on a really flat surface uh, just so that you can make sure things aren't hanging wonky or it's stretched weird in a, a place. It's really important to do that for any fabric you're cutting up out for clothing um, or anything really. But uh, knits are just a little... If you've never worked with knits, they're, they're gonna they're gonna move and shift on you and stretch out on you more than <laughs> other fabrics do. So um, something else to check because I've got this as close to the end as I, I can get. Um, I just double check because I do have. I don't know if y'all can see this. Is this in frame? I hope it is. Um, the ends don't always get cut even, especially when they're dealing with knits because it it pulls and stuff when you cut it. So I'm just making sure that. I have enough on the end that I'm actually on the end of both sides of my fabric and that's important to check because I have forgotten to do that before and have one side of my shirt be way lower than the other side because I didn't have fabric there. <laughs> so that's never fun to do. So on this folded edge, I've got it as even as I can because I'm fairly certain that when I cut out this pattern piece, my edge was probably not straight. Um, so something you can do is kind of just pull it a little bit. You don't want to pull it too much to try to straighten that out some. Um, like I said, I wouldn't worry about it too, too much. What you don't want to do is stretch it out and then set some on it because then it's going to just pop right back out. You want to make sure it's even before you start cutting and not pull on it while you're cutting because it's just going to pop right back in and you're not going <laughs> to, you're going to have something that's not right. Okay. So I've got this laid out, and since I'm gonna cut it out with my rotary cutter, I just need something to hold this pattern down. I would use literally anything laying around that will hold the pattern, just to keep it from shifting. I'll use other scissors. <laughs> I will use uh, rolls of tape. Um, anything that's got some heft to it, I put it down. They do make pattern weights that you can use. I don't, I've never had a need for that. I just grab whatever I've got laying around that I can sit on here that won't mess up my fabric, just to hold my pattern pace in place. And this is so much easier than pinning everything. Although, I'm going to show you in a minute for the top part of the pattern I'm going to have to pin. So, I will show you how to do that as well. But this is um, this is easier to me. And I like to use a 45-inch rotary blade for this. I have a 60-inch one that I use when cutting big pieces of quilting fabric. Because that one's just easier. But I like the smaller one for fabric pa or apparel fat patterns. Because... 
I can get around any small curves or anything a lot easier with this, which is in the top, but not really, the bottom doesn't really have that. So all I do, and you can put a straight edge if you want to, but I just, I just kind of go slow and I cut right along just like this. See, easy peasy. And sometimes I don't like to put a lot of pressure on it when I'm doing knits. So it doesn't, sometimes I get little strings like that. And plus I may need to sharpen my blade or get a new blade. But um, I don't put as much pressure on it as when, I, when I'm cutting cotton. Because I don't want it stretching. And I just hold down the edges like that. Just like that. I find this so much easier now i uh some of you may or may not watch uh carrie penny the happy crafty homemaker she sent me a video a while back where a lady took a piece of metal sheeting and put it underneath her cutting mat and she got these little metal these little magnets with handles and she held it down like that so i'll be looking into that as soon as i get some of those magnets i'll show you how that works because that looked like an awesome idea um so that's something I'll be looking into next. That was an awesome video. Um, if I can find a link to it, I'll put it down below. And thank you for that, Carrie Penny. That was a neat little trick to see. All right. So now my pattern piece is cut out. And I don't have to unpin anything. And everything's here. So at this point now, if I had anything I needed to transfer to my piece, my pattern, I would do that. And there's a, a different ways you can do that. Uh, my favorite thing to use is Taylor chalk. I have this Taylor's chalk. I have it in white, yellow, and blue. Uh, the only thing is you want to make sure that it comes off of your fabric. Most of the time it comes off no problem. Uh, most fabrics. Uh, there's just some fabrics that are really sensitive. And you might not use this. You might use other things. But I'll talk about that in a different, uh, different video when I have a more complex pattern that you have to make mark things on okay this one I don't have to mark anything on this one doesn't even have notches to match up or anything like that because some patterns have notches and some people like to cut them they'll cut a piece out here for the notch uh, I just cut a V to match the notches up um, you'll see the little V's on patterns if they have notches that's to help you match up the pattern better um, I just cut those with a little pair of scissors I don't cut them with this because I don't want to overshoot <laughs> and get out of my seam um, so there we go, we have our pattern piece. Now the only thing I might do with a pattern like this, because the pieces are so very similar to make sure I have the front and I don't mix it up with my back, I would take a lot of times, I'll flip it over and in this corner right here, usually I just take a pencil and I'll put an F right there. And I try not to get too far away from the edge so that it's in my seam but it's on the inside of the shirt too so it doesn't it shouldn't show but that just makes lets me know that this is my front piece okay so a, a pencil works great for marking as well if you just want a standard pencil like i said just make sure if it's going to show through the fabric or something like that because pencil doesn't always come off as easily as chalk all right so then i would cut my next piece out um, and I'm going to do that right quick before I put this fabric up. And then I'm going to set up to show you how to pin it if you need to pin it. Okay. Okay. I'm back and I'm going to cut my two top pieces out of this very narrow strip. Which at first look, it may not look like it's wide enough for my pieces. But that's because since it's such a short piece and it's been cut, it's, it's one that rolls a lot. Um, and you will find this on salvage edges, even on some fabrics. Um, this one rolls both ways because it has stretched both ways. But I'm going to use my trick I showed you before. Um, I have, I know where my center seam, center fold line is. So I'm going to fold this in. Oh, this is very, this has got fuzz all over it. It's picking up everything. All right. I fold my salvage end into there. So I have to lay this on a fold. 
and <laughs> you can see if I roll everything out, then I'm going to be able to fit this piece on there. But trying to keep it rolled out and, you know, cut it with the rotary scissors can get a little bit frustrating. So what I'm going to do and roll it out as best I can here like this is it's going to want to come back in on itself. get this turned just right because it's not quite right. Make sure. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to pin this first. And these pins are, these are technically quilting pins. They're longer, but I like them when I'm pinning things because it holds better. Um, and this works great for apparel fabrics as well. Uh, knits and cottons. Now, if you're going to be sewing with silks or thin things, uh, you need a finer needle, and um, I'll cover that in a different video when I talk about working with those types of fabrics. So, I'm going to pin lengthwise. That's why I like the longer pins, because they don't have to put as many pins in it. <laughs> I'm doing this too because it's easier to cut it uh, along the edges because I'm going to be cutting well I can still cut this with a rotary cutter or I can cut it with scissors um, but I'm pinning to make sure my fabric stays in place to make sure my fabric behaves this is why I'm doing this but this is uh, the way you do this so you can keep your pins out of the way of whatever you're cutting with and keep everything straight so pins are great uh, like if I was working with a real slinky, slinky, like lightweight material, I usually wind up pinning. I don't cut with a rotary cutter because uh, it just moves too much for me. And then I get wonky, wonky, wonky cuts. We don't want wonky cuts. <laughs> we want cuts to be straight as we can. But, uh, this is how I pin it when I'm dealing with a situation like this. Actually, this is how I would pin any pattern piece um, if I'm pinning. Uh, I may not put as many pins in it if I'm cutting something that doesn't move too much and I pin it. I always pin it with the edge like that. I don't pin it like this because I have issues sometimes with the, the heads of the pins getting in my way or something. This way, everything's out of my way and I can cut it out really easily and like I said I am going to cut this with the rotary cutter um, or let's use my fancy uh, sewing shears as I got as a gift from my dad I love these things these things are super sharp they got some weight to them but they cut right to the end they are fabulous so here we go get you a little ASMR cutting so, this just gives you an idea of, of the difference between cutting with the rotary cutter and a pair of scissors. Um, it takes a little bit more time, even around the curves, with the scissors, but some situations call for it. So. And I did go into the salvage a little bit on this one, but this salvage is just a regular rolled edge salvage. It's not like a different color or sometimes they even have a different weave to them, depending on the fabric. So there we go. I've cut out my little piece. And like I said, at this point, I would mark anything if I needed to. I don't need to mark anything on these pieces, except what might be front and back. Y'all, I will never again make me a pin cushion with polka dots on it because I feel the need to stick my pins into the polka dots. 
I know that's just a weird thing, but it was so cute when I made it. It looked like a little mushroom, and then I was like, oh, I can't. I can't just randomly stick pins in it. So, I have a blog post about this. I'll put it down below. I made this out of a teacup. I've broken it, and I had to put it back together. That's <laughs> why it's like that. A candlestick, a teacup, and then a cushion that I made. There's my little crocheted, um, it's supposed to be a caterpillar on my mushroom. Um, so I made a whole little thing out of a muffin tin that this was attached to and it came off so I can move it around better, but I'll put the link down below. All right, now I have my top, this one cut and, uh, I will mark this one now. A pencil is not going to work on this. Uh, well, I can, I have a white pencil around here somewhere. Um. Uh, that I can mark on it and just so I know that this is the front or this is the back rather and that my other piece is the front so there you go that is a, this one's a little longer than my last tutorial uh, but that's that's how to lay fabric out and get your patterns set up so you can cut your fabric out now um, I'll have some more tutorials coming up about hemming knits and things in the future so I hope y'all will come back for those and if you have any questions uh, please leave me a comment below or email me with the email below and I will y'all remember to have a life lived creatively and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!